In my previous video, I have shown you the best districts to live in Berlin inside the ring. But that is just a small part of Berlin. There are dozens of more districts outside the ring that have so much more to offer. And in this video, I'm going to show you how it looks there, who lives there and what's special about them. After that, you can decide which one is best for you. Let's start in the very east with Friedrichshagen and Ransdorf. The two districts that are located at the beautiful Müggelsee, Berlin's biggest lake. Friedrichshagen comes across like a peaceful little town in the outskirts of Berlin, with lots of nice little shops and cafes around. Mostly wealthier German families seem to live here, while in summer it is a popular spot for the inner city crowd to escape the heat of Berlin's concrete jungle, since there is plenty of space to hang out by the water. If we move a bit to the right, we can find one of Berlin's most unique areas. In Ransdorf there is Neu Venedig or New Venice, where you can have the feeling of being in Venice without having to go down all the way to Italy. If you'd like to live close to the water, it doesn't get better than this. Though it will only be quiet during the week, because it's become a popular weekend trip destination for many Berliners who love to explore the area by canoe. Before we move on to magnificent Köpenick, let me quickly tell you about the partner of today's video, Safety Wing. Since you are watching this video, you are thinking about moving to Berlin for some time, right? One thing you need while being abroad is health insurance. Every time I'm going abroad for a while, I will get Safety Wing because my German health insurance will not cover me outside of Europe. And Safety Wing is the leading medical travel insurance for anyone who travels a lot. They offer two different options. One is called Remote Health, which is designed for remote workers. And secondly, Nomad Insurance for digital nomads, which sometimes I am. Nomad insurance covers you all around the world and can be purchased while already traveling. Safety Wing is super flexible, it just works like a subscription, you can cancel anytime without having to give a reason. It's not only very affordable, they have amazing customer support and the reviews really speak for themselves. I mean, have you ever seen such a high rating on Trustpilot for anything? I haven't. It's simple, it's straightforward, there are no hidden fees or rules, Everything can be done online. It's really the only insurance you need for traveling because it not only covers medical stuff, but also travel delay, natural disaster and personal liability. So if you were always wondering what is the best choice for travel insurance, search no more. Go to the link in the description and check out all the details. And now let's see what's up in Köpenick. Huh? Of all the districts, Köpenick is for sure the most charming one thanks to its historic old town with its unique German architecture and sites such as the Köpenick Palace and the old town hall. Here you can find both tourists and locals admiring the scenery around them. The whole district is dotted with classical statues, something that you won't find anywhere else in Berlin. We asked a Köpenick resident to tell us more about this little gem. Ich finde, sage ich mal, im Südosten ist das ja eine der schönsten Gegenden. Gerade die Altstadt Köpenick mit dem vielen Wasser ist eine Insel. Von daher finde ich eine sehr, auch von der Natur und Umgebung her, eine sehr schöne äh, Gegend. Ja. Viele äh, Wasser, auch Wald ist nicht weit entfernt. Mhm. Ja, also die Natur an sich. Ne, man kann richtig viel Zeit am und auf dem Wasser verbringen. Nachteil, also wenn man jetzt wirklich abends irgendwie auf einer Party ist oder irgend sowas, dann ist es doch gerade nachts der Weg manchmal schon ein bisschen weiter, um wieder zurückzukommen. Just up from Köpenick, Schöneweide is an old industrial area sitting on the banks of the river. In recent years, Schöneweide has seen a surge in cultural development. You can find many new cafes, galleries and arts initiatives popping up in the many old industrial buildings. For example, there's the recently opened RSO art and cultural hub located in an old brewery with large open spaces for creative activities. You can really feel a growing interest from younger people visiting from all over Berlin. And with the FEZ Wuhlheide Center for Children, Youth and Family, the biggest center for games, education and adventure in Berlin, Schöneweide is also a great place for families who want to escape the inner city life. But it's also a convenient place to live for students since the HTW University campus is located here. 
As one of the most up and coming areas in all of Berlin, Schöneweide has something for every age. Moving a bit north, we find the district of Friedrichsfelde. I would say this place is calm and it's not so far from the city and you get cheap apartments here. We have nice parks because they're not so crowded. It's nice for going for walks. Yeah. And um, also we have the cheer park close. That's the best here. Yeah, mm. we have a Jahreskarte yeah. like annual pass. I think uh, defi it's definitely for students. Also families. I think here, especially here, live more conservative people. And yeah, yeah less wealthy people. It's mostly like these big houses yes. made with cheaper flats. So. Yeah, I live in a socially supported apartment uh, building, mm. but the neighbors are <laughs> terrible. Pissing in our lifts or uh, taking our Amazon packages and not giving it back. <laughs> yes. or, but I guess uh, that happens at other places as well. Yeah. A stone's throw away to the right, there is Biesdorf, with the beautiful Biesdorf Palace at its heart. We met some residents to find out more about who lives here and who this district is for. Someone who um, wants to stay in a quiet place, uh, needs less noise around, then I would definitely say that you should choose this place. If you are talking about the community, uh, Germans, uh, Russians, Mostly uh, old days people or you know uh, who has been settled and with family, those kind of things. Then yep. a couple of hiking areas where you can go with bike or like on foot. Yeah, so basically a lot of nature around here. Yeah, and also if you want to um, pay less rent for houses, then maybe you can choose this place. Nice. Yeah. If you get one. If you are a party people, then yeah, it's <laughs> definitely not for you. Can't believe that this is actually in Berlin. This feels like a proper village. You know, there's small houses everywhere, everybody has a garden, there's a pool, a trampoline. You have plenty of space. And then we, inside the ring, are just scrammed together, you know, in this six-story buildings. Just next to Biesdorf is Kausdorf, which is kind of a similar district. We asked a local to paint a picture for us. Bürgerlicher, sag ich mal, kleinere Häuser, nicht so enge Straßen, weniger Betrieb. Und das ist halt hier familienfreundlich, ne? Mit ja. See, genau. Also die schlechteste Sache ist ganz eindeutig die B1. Das okay. ist die große Piste da, ja. laut und äh, dreckig. Okay. Ähm, Vorzug, würde ich mal sagen, ist auf jeden Fall, gehört das hier mit dazu. Keiner hat, glaube ich, so einen tollen Park mit drei Seen. Das macht's aus. Was fehlt, ist tatsächlich ähm, mal eine Bar oder ein vernünftiges Café oder sowas. Und das kann man hier lange sehen. As you travel to the north side of Kaulsdorf, you start to see rougher feeling neighborhoods with loads of street vendors. We move away from the detached family houses towards the lower income high-rise estates that are more common to Marzahn and Hellersdorf, our next district. The area is mostly dominated by large housing complexes, but there are also very nice corners like the Bockwindmühle and the Gardens of the World, one of Berlin's nicest spots where you can enjoy dozens of international themed gardens and frequent park festivals. Ich finde Marzahn Hellersdorf ist einer der schönsten Bezirke von Berlin. Es ist noch eher ein ruhigerer Bezirk und recht grün, schön mit wenn man Hund hat, kann man schön spazieren gehen und auch für Kinder mit vielen Spielplätzen. Jeder Wohnblock hat einen Innenhof mit einem Spielplatz und Brandenburg ist auch gleich da. Ah ja, der Bezirk wird ja auch gerne als Nazi-Bezirk bezeichnet. Ob jetzt hier Nazis leben, kann ich so nicht bestätigen. Ich weiß, dass es äh, ausländische Mitbürger gibt, die schon schlechte Erfahrungen gemacht haben. Ich kenne aber auch viele, die halt das nicht bestätigen. Also denke ich, leben hier eher konservative Menschen im Verhältnis zum Rest von Berlin. Just around the corner to the left lies Alt Hohenschönhausen, a district that couldn't be more different to its right neighbor. Mostly wealthy German families who have been in Berlin for generations are living here in spacious houses and nice apartment buildings. Here in Alt Hohenschönhausen is also a very important historical site. It is this prison here. In East Germany, this prison was used to keep political prisoners. Everybody the Stasi didn't like ended up here. And this is where they got their food prepared. We don't want to know what was in there. Huh? It is a very nice district because you have those two nice lakes over here. One is the Orangsee, 
where you can even go in the water. There's like a little beach. And then there's the other one with the ducks. If we have a look further south, we find one of the most well-known neighborhoods in East Berlin, Lichtenberg. Lichtenberg is a very diverse district. On one hand, you have those huge apartment complexes, but then you also have those little townhouses, you know, that look like they're out of a village. And in between, you have these massive industrial complexes, old ones, but also new ones. Probably one of the most special things about Lichtenberg is the Don Juan Center. It's Germany's biggest Asian market. It's a huge area with a lot of like single standing halls that have all different kind of things in there. You can do your nails, you can buy clothing, food from Asia. So if you are from Asia and you're missing those huge markets that you have over there, this is the district for you. And that's probably the reason why Lichtenberg has the highest amount of Asian people living in Berlin. So there's especially a lot of Vietnamese people they just love it here because they can go just to this market, buy all the food they know from back home, you know, for a good price. What's also special about Lichtenberg is its hospital. It has a massive hospital that looks like a palace. And in between all this weirdness, there's also a lot of green. There's even farm animals just in the middle of Lichtenberg. Just a bit further south, there is Rummelsburg one of my personal favorites. The southern part contains mostly huge industrial buildings, but the northern part gives you the best of both worlds. It is close to all the craziness that is happening in Friedrichshain, but at the same time, you have the calm and quiet of the beautiful Rummelsburger Bay. One of Berlin's most popular clubs is also located here, the infamous Sisyphos. And thanks to being so close to major public transport junction Ostkreuz, you can go anywhere in Berlin in no time. Next, it's time for Weißensee. Weißensee is a small district just next to Prenzlauer Berg and that's why it's very popular among young families who want to live close to uh, Prenzlauer Berg but cannot afford living in Prenzlauer Berg itself because Prenzlauer Berg has become one of the most expensive districts in all Berlin. And if they move here to Weißensee, they can be in like five to 10 minutes in the action in Prenzlauer Berg, have the nice neighborhoods over there, the restaurants, and then come back quickly to the quiet of Weißensee. And as the name says, there's a little lake called Weißensee in here. There's also a Strandbad, which is a very popular spot in summer to hang out. And it's in general a very nice area to live. Not so many like single houses standing here, but more bigger apartment complexes. Last but not least, we are moving north to Buch. Buch is also called the Gesundheitsregion or health region, because it hosts various hospitals and a major campus with lots of research institutes on site. Buch itself may not be the prettiest neighborhood, but it is for sure the greenest, since forests, fields and meadows are an integral part of the whole district. All right, we have covered most of the districts of Outer East Berlin. There are a few more, but if I were to cover all of them, this video would be at least one hour long, but this were the most unique ones. And in part three of the series, I will cover all the districts outside the ring in West Berlin, and I think they will be even more fun to look at. Until then, enjoy Berlin.